You are traveling south by automobile, approaching the city from Tyrone on Route 220. This large green sign indicates that Altoona lies to the right. And you follow the direction. But now where? There's no sign here. So you decide to follow the traffic down the right fork of the road. Just look at the trash and the litter along the left berm. What a mess. As you continue down the legislative route toward what you hope is Altoona, you are confronted with a T intersection, but again, no sign. You continue following the traffic pattern to the right, and then you make a left turn onto the Juniata 8th Street Bridge. It's a bit frightening, isn't it? The span is just wide enough to allow two vehicles to pass without sideswiping each other. What a relief. You're over the bridge. Is this Altoona? If it is, it's a pretty dismal place. There must be a better way for a visitor to enter the city. So let's go back out onto Route 220 and try again. This time, let's bear left at the Greenwood intersection. This looks better, a brand new four-lane divided highway. another route into the city, so let's try it. This would look very promising to a visitor, nice neighborhood, trees, well-kept homes, well-painted lawns as well. But directly in front of us, another T intersection. Which way do we go? No signs again, so suppose we turn left and see what happens. It's just a short ride down Walton Avenue, and around the turn on the Lloyd Street. As we continue down Lloyd Street, you can see small yellow signs directing us to the main business district. At least, now we're headed in the right direction. We cross 6th and 7th Avenues. As far as you can see, house after house, long overdue for repairs and paint. Shabby and unkept. See for yourself as we take a little ride down 7th Avenue. off 7th Avenue, we approach the 7th Street Bridge over the railroad tracks, and as we approach the intersection, we can see the attractive new Fountain Park on Chestnut Avenue. A left turn, and we're on to Chestnut, and all along the avenue, century-old commercial buildings, most still blackened and unshining remembrance of the old coal-burning railroad engines. the situation doesn't get any better when you turn onto 11th Street. A little more sunlight, perhaps, but it only serves to emphasize the crumbling mortar and once yellow brick buildings turn gray with age and coal dust. Everywhere, mute evidence of years of neglect. One turn to the right, and we're in the heart of the city, 11th Avenue. Here we see a number of modern, attractive retail stores. Hundreds of thousands of dollars have been spent in the renovation of some of these buildings, but this is only part of the scene. All along 11th Avenue, stores are closed. Many are boarded up and ugly. They are out of business. Why they are out of business is another problem. At the moment, we are concerned only with the unpleasant picture of blight that they represent on the main street of Altoona's business district. What you are seeing is not very impressive.
have seen two approaches to the city. Did you like what you saw? Well, neither did we. So let's try again. Back on Route 220, instead of turning right at Kettle Street, we'll stay on the expressway and move down Pleasant Valley Boulevard. Here again, the homes and the lawns are well kept. An abundance of trees add to the beauty of the thoroughfare. And soon we arrive at the Jaggard Street intersection, clearly indicated by another large green and white sign. Turning right off the boulevard, we see attractive homes, both large and small, in white and pastel colors dotting the hillside. A very pretty scene at the top of the hill. One turn to the right, one to the left, and you're on 17th Street. It looks all right at the top, but not for very long. Things get a little bit worse as we go down the other side of the hill. Mighty close quarters. When cars are parked along the curb on this two-lane street, and the scenery has certainly changed drastically in the last few moments. Take a really good look as we travel along 17th Street. We cross the 17th Street Bridge. Over busy 11th Avenue, turn right. Navigate a dark, dingy alley. Another right turn. Again, you cross 11th Avenue, and you head for a parking lot located along the back side of Altoona's main shopping district. A roundabout way of getting there, to say the least. Well, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Let's make our fourth attempt at reaching Altoona's downtown core area. This time, we'll go down Route 36 from the Buckhorn. We're on a hill again, and again, the Buckhorn route looks fine at the top. But just like 17th Street, the further down you go, the worse it gets. The slums are there. The 18th Street slums, the worst areas of Altoona. It's the same on both sides of the street. Well, to put it mildly, the odds seem to be against us. So far, we've made four attempts to find a clean route back into the city. Maybe number five will be our lucky number. From 22 East, we come into Hollidaysburg. Travel along tree-lined Allegheny Street. Turn right off to Penn Street. Beautiful architecture, well-planned and developed landscaping, creating an atmosphere of refinement and well-being. We leave Hollidaysburg and we enter Route 220, traveling a good four-lane highway, divided by a medial strip. Past the Blairmont Country Clubs, rolling fairways, and some of the most beautiful homes in the area. It's a five-minute drive at 50 miles an hour from Hollidaysburg to Altoona. And the ride is very pleasant. And as we ascend at Lake Mont Hill, a glance to the right offers a lovely view of the park and the lake area. At the crest of the hill, we are impressed by the fully lighted modern boulevard. And here too is industry, like the modern and new SKF plant and the new Penelec headquarters. These modern, well-lighted highways and favorable building sites are all conducive to attracting new industries, the backbone of more jobs. And now, it's on to Logan Boulevard. across 6th Avenue and up over the expressway. From the expressway, we enter Beale Avenue and the surroundings are still attractive. Maybe this time we've found the route for our visitor. We continue along Beale Avenue and then turn onto 18th Street. 
like a punch in the midriff. After more than six miles of beautiful landscape, excellent highways, modern industrial buildings, and attractive homes, we've hit rock bottom again. We can't turn back, so we'll move up 18th Street. Under the culverts, and once again, we're right in the center of the 18th Street, 12th and 13th Avenue complex. Well, by now, we know how things look if we continue up 18th Street, so let's make a turn onto 13th Avenue. Perhaps that view will be better. A bad guess. What would our visitor see if he proceeded to the other end of this avenue? As we observe this area, let's try to look at these buildings as though we've never seen them before. Remember, this is a visitor seeing our town, perhaps for the first time. He is an industrialist, and he is here to consider the possibilities of locating a new industry in Altoona. Perhaps he is also a potential resident. He has no knowledge of Altoona's potential. Well, after five unsuccessful attempts to enter the city by a blight-free route, we begin to wonder if it might be better if our visitor came by train. How do the railroad travelers see our town? Could this ugly, dirty little building be Altoona's passenger station? It could. And it's almost enough to send a person running back to the train, isn't it? Our visitor doesn't know it. But this ugly group of buildings represents the rear view of some of the stores along Altoona's main retail business district. If you've never been in Altoona, and this were your first stop, would you want to come back again? Establish a home and bring up a family here? Of course not. Well, we have another chance. Perhaps our visitor could fly to Altoona with air carriers reporting a substantial increase in passengers every year, we may assume that many people do come to Altoona by plane. They arrive at the Blair County Airport at Martinsburg. Our visitor has flown over beautiful country, forests, streams, and farms, and the airliner sits down at the Martinsburg Airport. Soon, after boarding an airport limousine, he'll have a pleasant 15-mile trip to Altoona. The drive begins with a downhill grade overlooking some of the most beautiful, inviting farm countryside in the United States. On the way to Martinsburg, our visitor will be delighted by a pastoral scene, rolling farmlands, barns, livestock, and farmhouses, solid structures that have stood for as long as 75 years. These homes are painted regularly and kept in an excellent state of repair. There is no junk or garbage in sight to mar the scene. On Route 164 between Martinsburg and Roaring Spring, our visitor will enjoy a panoramic view of the famous Morrison's Cove, where hundreds of acres of farming and grazing lands have been developed with loving care. At Roaring Spring, a glance to the right reveals the new Nason Hospital complex. A few seconds later, we passed the small community of McKee. Over the hill and approaching the Lemersville intersection, we will make a left turn and move out onto Route 220.
Our car now approaches the Duncansville intersection, crosses the main east-west Route 22, and if he squints just a bit, our visitor may be able to read this sign directing him to the Altona business area. Along Route 764, he will observe attractive new homes and rolling lawns in an atmosphere of true suburbia. Here again is industry, the Vita Root Corporation, and a beautiful spot for it too. Up 6th Avenue, cross 58th Street, past the Commerce Park Studios of Channel 10, built in 1959. Soon, we turn off 6th Avenue onto the expressway. Up until now, it's been a pleasant ride, but this is far enough. We forgot for a moment. But our visitor will not enjoy this route. We know where it leads, remember, right back to the 18th Street slums. Now, if you've been counting, you are aware that we have tried at least seven ways to enter Altoona without passing through blighted areas. We've gone by automobile, train, and by airplane. Every time that we've tried to navigate past the substandard housing, we've failed. It just can't be done. Most of the things that you've seen were filmed from a moving automobile, just as a visitor would have viewed them. Sometimes, when you're inside a car, you miss a lot. We'd like you to see now an outside view as our camera saw it. To see how bad it really is. It isn't necessary to locate these buildings. We all know where they are. the city were a fairy tale. For then all the ugliness that you have seen could be changed into beauty by the wave of a magic wand. But this is a true story, not a fantasy. The problem has plagued Altona for many years, and it will continue until it is checked. There is no easy panacea, no miracle to solve. The first step is strict code enforcement. But the ultimate solution requires a complete awakening of our best community leadership. Business, labor, industry, commerce, the city, the county, the state, and the federal governments. We need to stimulate creative, imaginative thinking, to tap new reservoirs of leadership, motivated through thoughtful discussions and actions, to thoroughly explore the possible solutions. Above all, we must stop hiding our heads in the sand to the past to the days of the steam locomotive. As a resident of Altoona, you can play an active role. This is your city. It's your problem. It's your responsibility. What can you do?